If you're anything like me, you have lots of ambitious plans for the future. I've got a whole series of new books I want to write, thousands more videos to script, but guess what? None of us may be able to do any of the things we want to do if we don't have our health. Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. Just ate some garlicky hummus? Great, but you may want to listen in on our first story. Approximately one in three people suffer from halitosis, bad breath. What can we do about it? I've got videos on tongue cleaning, gum chewing, and the best mouthwash. Population studies suggest that those who eat fewer fruits and vegetables may be at higher risk. There's lots of things associated with worse diets that are also linked to halitosis, though the fruit and vegetable links seem to remain even after controlling for these other factors. Works in dogs, vegetable chew toys seem to help, but what about people? There's a compound found in cruciferous vegetables that can effectively eliminate the volatile sulfur compounds like the rotten egg gas hydrogen sulfide. These are the foul gases that cause bad breath, produced mainly from the breakdown of sulfur-containing amino acids concentrated in animal protein, cysteine, and methionine. The cruciferous compound gloms onto the sulfur compound and prevents it from going gaseous whereas peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen, and many of the flavors in breath mints and chewing gum didn't actually treat the cause and just kind of have a masking effect, whereas something like broccoli chewing gum might help at least temporarily, but why not just eat broccoli instead? Researchers have tried using a compound that clears cysteine from the tongue for those who don't just want to try to cut down on casein and other animal proteins that are concentrated in it. The compound they use is derived from kiwi fruit, so can you just eat kiwis instead? No word on halitosis, but twice daily kiwi fruit consumption for two months showed significant improvements in gingivitis, plaque, and gum disease. Of course, not all fruits are going to be beneficial. Durian fruit may give rise to the most profound bad breath because the fruit itself stinks to high heaven, as many of you will remember from my harrowing experience with it in medical school that I sheepishly related in my book, How Not to Die. And the vegetable that comes to mind when you think bad breath is garlic. Is there anything you can do to deodorize garlic breath using different kinds of foods? Well, you don't know until you put it to the test. After giving people some garlic, they tried whey protein, lemon juice, green tea, chlorophyll 7-up soda, a raw pink lady apple, a cooked apple, parsley, spinach, and mint leaves. Anyone want to take a guess as to which worked best? Parsley, spinach, and mint treatments were effective in the deorderization of garlic breath stinky compounds. They're all green, so they wondered if it was the chlorophyll, and it turned out, nope, chlorophyll alone didn't help. There are four stinky garlic compounds, if you don't do anything after the garlic, the stench goes away on its own, and taking chlorophyll didn't seem to change that at all. But parsley, spinach, and mint did, starting almost immediately. What do we think was going on? Well, raw apples work better than cooked apples, which are basically the same food, except for the enzymes being destroyed by heating, so maybe there's some enzymatic deodorization. Here's the data. And yes, raw worked better than cooked, but cooked still worked better than nothing, and so did the lemon juice and green tea, even though they didn't have any active enzymes since they were both pasteurized. Here's the beverages data. The whey protein and water didn't seem to help at all, even compared with the soda, though green tea and lemon appeared to do better. Maybe the acidic pH was involved in the deodorization from the lemon juice and soft drink breath experiments since they used a sour lemon-lime soft drink. Garlic breath volatiles, um, allyl methyl disulfide, diallyl disulfide, and allyl morcaptan, were significantly reduced by parsley, spinach, mint, raw and microwaved apple, soft drink, green tea, and lemon juice treatments in comparison to water, the control, but were not reduced by chlorophyll and whey protein treatments. And perhaps the polyphenol phytonutrients were the active ingredient in green tea? Uh, with consumption of full flavor garlic, it is not yet possible to completely avoid malodorous breath associated with garlic consumption, but there are some chasers that may help you bring it down a notch. Finally today, we explore the wondrous properties of green tea for controlling halitosis. Tea 
is the second most widely consumed beverage in the world after water, to, to the tune of billions of pounds every year. I showed how drinking green tea after eating garlic helps deodorize your breath, but what about drinking green tea to deodorize regular bad breath without the garlic? There's been lots of studies on the effect of green tea on other aspects of oral health. For example, green tea appears to work as well as chlorhexidine for reducing plaque, and chlorhexidine is like the gold standard. Green tea is safer, too. Chlorhexidine has so many side effects that you're not supposed to use it for more than a short time period. Side effects like discoloration of the teeth, increased formation of tartar, and impairment of taste sensation, and occasionally damage to the inner lining of your mouth, whereas if anything, drinking green tea appears to have good side effects. Tea consumption is associated with living a longer life, thanks to links to less cardiac death, heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, and not just by a little. A three-cup-a-day increase in tea consumption per day is associated with a 24% decreased risk of premature death from all causes put together, the equivalent of adding about two years onto your lifespan. The longevity link extends to both green tea and black, though the per-cup effect appears greater with green. If you compare the antimicrobial efficacy of green tea and chlorhexidine mouth rinses against the bacteria associated with tooth decay in children with severe early childhood cavities, this study found that a green tea mouth rinse was superior to chlorhexidine, but this study found the opposite. Chlorhexidine wiped out like 95% of the decay bacteria versus more like 70% for green tea, but just rinsing with water alone can cut levels in half. So in terms of protecting teeth, the effectiveness of green tea as a mouth rinse agent has not been proven, but what about for bad breath? The effect of green tea on halitosis has evidently been well known from early times, perhaps due to the deodorizing activity of certain antioxidant polyphenols, but you don't really know until you put it to the test. Uh, this study found that secondhand green tea tablets reduced stinky breath compounds, but who sucks on tea tablets? Green tea was compared to breath mints, chewing gum, and parsley oil, and green tea seemed to help, but did not reach statistical significance. But again, it wasn't drinking or swishing with green tea, but rather some green tea powder sprinkled on people's tongues. This study used actual tea, and found that one minute later, swishing with green tea was no better than swishing with water. OK, but what about chronic use over time? This is the study I've been looking for, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial in which people rinse their mouths twice a day for a month with a green tea mouthwash or a similar-looking, tasting placebo mouthwash. And at the end of the month, the stinky bad breath compounds were reduced nearly 40% in the green tea group versus closer to only 10% in the placebo group. Bottom line, a systematic review on the effect of the tea plant on decreasing the level of halitosis concluded that green tea mouthwash can indeed reduce bad breath. Though they don't feel the evidence is sufficiently robust for dentists to start recommending it on its own due to lack of enough randomized clinical studies. But green tea mouthwash can be a good treatment of choice beside other halitosis treatments like tongue scraping to achieve better clinical results. We would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition. Go to nutritionfacts.org slash testimonials. We may be able to share it on social media to help inspire others. If you want to see any graphs, charts, graphics, images, and studies mentioned here, please go to the Nutrition Facts podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. My latest book, How Not to Age, has been out for about half a year now. Check it out from your local public library. And of course, all the proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books goes directly to charity. NutritionFacts.org is a nonprofit science based public service where you can sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research with bite sized videos and articles. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, no kickbacks, strictly non-commercial. I'm not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition.